everybody, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Night Movies Podcast, where friends get together, one of us picks a film for us to watch, and then we review it here for your entertainment pleasure. So, fitting with family-themed month mm -hmm. with November, Elmer, what did you pick for us to watch? It's Thanksgiving. It stinks. I said it's the month of Thanksgiving. Oh. Like you said, it's all about family. So in keeping up with last year's theme of family, I picked No Escape. This year, another family film. I picked My Cousin Vinny, or as my father would say, My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> he loved this film. <laughs> my Cousin? My Cousin Vinny. <laughs> um, this movie I grew up watching, it's, it's a classic in my book. It was hard to watch this and, and kind of be objective in you know, how I was going to rate it. Um, it's just one of Joe Pesci's better movies. I know that uh, I've been used to seeing him and many people are used to seeing him play like these roles of being a gangster. And so this is kind of like a departure from that, seeing him in a comedic role where in a, in a way he's still a little bit gangster, you know, but um, it's, it's different. <laughs> it's like you think of like one particular scene. I'm sure it's the the punching scene <laughs> where he literally had a fucking jump. To punch. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I picked this one. I thought it would be a good family flick, and uh, I went in. This is a classic. It's a ten for me. Uh, is that I your critical review classic rating, or is that just your personal? That's just rating. personal. That's full of bias. That's basting in bias. <laughs> it's a ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basting you. What about you? you? This is a classic for you too. Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, like when we first met 12 years ago, um, almost 13, I remember one of our early conversations of like what some of our favorite movies and we both realized that our parents um, brought us up on on uh, My Cousin Vinny and then it became an instant um like no longer our separate lives, but our together lives. And I would say we watch this at least once or twice a year. And this is definitely one. But I went in with my critical guess of, of the film saying that there's it's not going to be a perfect 10 um, critically. I'm not here to say biased going in. I don't need to be turkey basted. Um, <laughs> but wait for the score. Wait for it. She's but, doing this setup like it's it's so fair. I, I went in for, She's I gonna be like, it's a, a nine point nine. 9. <laughs> <laughs> I went in as a guess as a nine. Um, because I mean, when when there's a movie you actually watch multiple times every year, it's hard to be like it's gonna be a six. You know, so I went in with a nine, knowing there's going to be some issues. So what about you, Katie? Because you've never seen this movie, right? I, yeah, I've never seen this movie. And for some reason, <laughs> and I was telling my mom this last night when we were watching. I was like, is this the one with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny Levito? <laughs> and she's like, no, that's twins. And I was like, oh, then I don't know what this movie is. <laughs> um, so when I read the description, I gave it a five out of 10 and my note said got me at road trip because that is one of my favorite movie tropes is people are on a road trip okay it's either gonna be really good or it's gonna suck mm -hmm. and then when i watched the trailer i gave it a six but i didn't have any notes for that okay so are you ready to count us down yes in three two one show your numbers <laughs> so I gave, it a, I, I gave it a nine <laughs> i decided to draw joe pesci in his home alone at the uh, role and That's then you I, have herman monster and then he's, holding, the judge, the and he's holding uh a box of instant grits <laughs> i gave it an eight nice and this, lisa I gave it a nine as well. I gave it a nine because even though it is a 10 for me, yeah. if I went critically, there there's plot holes, but in a way where it doesn't ruin the movie for me. And and one thing is like every time we watch this movie, we always sit there and debate on a couple of the plot holes. 
every single time. It never fails. We always debate on it. <laughs> and then looking at the ratings, Internet Movie Database gave it a 7.6 out of 10. 80, 86 on Rotten Tomatoes. Metacritic, 68%. And Google, a 91%. I mean, it's a pretty classic film, especially if people have seen it. Um, it was, I, it wasn't in the trailer, I think, because I think I later watched a, a trailer for it, um, where it says like the comedy. Oh no, it was on the Blu-ray that we have. Yeah, those are TV spots. The TV spots is like uh, to this year's comedy movie of the year or something. <laughs> something and it, like it's that. like it had nothing to do with the actual movie. Yeah, like, the scenes and and what was being said. It's like. Well, you watch the movie and it's like Marissa Tomei and Joe mm -hmm. Pesci. See, she's the one on my pros. I have two pros. The girlfriend, I love that actress. I don't know if she's even in anything anymore, but like oh, yeah. yeah, she was in Spider-Man. Oh, I I don't watch that. So. Um <laughs> I love that actress. And the fact that the judge was Herman Munster. Because I was just like, damn, now I really want to go watch the monsters. <laughs> and then I asked my mom, is that dude dead? And she's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He definitely and he did. I liked, I mean, I liked the chemistry between them, between Vinny and, and, and Mona Lisa. Like, like their their interactions, especially when um, they're talking about, like, did, did she leave the, the water dripping? And then they had that whole interaction. She also won um, the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for this movie. Wow. She won that. Um, she got the MTV Award for Best Breakthrough Performance, but she was nominated for the Chicago Film Critics Association, but she didn't win it. But okay. yes, she's she got her whole life for this. They're flirting like. I use this because of torque, 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 torque. And then all of a sudden he popped a boner and they're making it out. <laughs> yeah. no, what is it? Like, you don't know how to argue like a Gambini. It's an art form. Because well, she was the one I, doing the argument. Because oh. my mom was telling me, because I never saw this, but she has seen it a few times and she thinks this movie's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And she's like, okay, you got to pay attention to what the girlfriend says. And I was like, let me guess. She solves the crime. And she's like, well, yeah, but and I was like, Thanks. <laughs> Your mom ruins the oh. movies for you a lot, I see. I mean, like, I still enjoyed it, but, like, when, when being told, like, pay attention to what she says, I mean, she does come off like a dumb floozy, but she actually knows, knows her shit. And oh. when she was up on that stand testifying, I was like, you give it to them. Like, it's a trick question. <laughs> it's a bullshit question. Can you win? So they go, no, because it's a trick question, and this is why. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, she, like, I mean, honestly, she could be talking complete crap and, like, making this stuff up, and I still wouldn't know because I know Jack about cars. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, sure, a four-cylinder and a, and a wheel moves and an axle moves. <laughs> I mean, the movie has so many memorable scenes. Like the when when the guy who's arrested with uh, Vinny's nephew, he decides to get the uh, his own attorney. <laughs> like like um, the stuttering guy, he just starts stuttering. I was like, this dude can't catch a break. <laughs> it's like he's watching him, and then when he sits down, he sits down so like so confidently, confident like. Especially the part where, like, he's like, and you weren't wearing your prescription glasses? And the guy's like, those are reading glasses. No more questions. And he just points at him so intently. Oh, my no God. No more questions. And then what about, like, no matter where Vinny and the girlfriend stayed, they were always woken up by, like, pigs, <laughs> trains, a whistle. An, an owl. owl. There, an owl. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then when he fi he finally gets some sleep when he's thrown into jail for like contempt of court mm -hmm. for like the seventh time <laughs> and he's like okay this is like New York I can I can sleep. And it was it, it was funny how like when he first arrived <laughs> and the guy thought he was going to get raped cuz the way he was talking to him is like we're going to do this and it's going to be this. painful. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, like you got to do it. I don't want to do it either, but I mean we're here. We're here. We're in this together now. I don't want to. Well, what's your alternatives? I don't know. <laughs> Suicide, death. <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's the same thing, and you got into law school. 
I was telling her, I, I'm surprised that um, Ralph Macchio, he never he never did a movie or they never made a movie and casted him as a young Elvis because he, he looked just like he, he could play Elvis. I you want to know who looks like a young Elvis? Justin Bieber. And that's sad because what? that dude sucks. You've How never you seen pictures of, oh my God, someone compared uh, an actual good image of Justin Bieber's facial structure to Elvis when he was young. And they look nearly identical minus the colored hair. It's, hmm. it's, it's crazy. Like Google it. It's actually. Oh, it's, that's what she's doing now. Um, but with oh, Michael, I see, see it. Doesn't he? I can. I mean, I can see it. See, there's uh, some. There's I mean, some, I some but a minute nah. because I can't stand Justin Bieber. Like he's a dick. But like their facial features, he could easily pass. Yeah. Him. I would. The, the thing that upset me the most about this movie is, I thought we were gonna get more of. They're on a road trip. Well, <laughs> so, <you're a> like, <laughs> So, like, when they were on the road trip for Was that how they described it? Um, no, it was just, it, like, the, I can't remember the trailer now, but I still liked it, but the concept of, like, That's reading the description, I was like, it got me at road trip. Hmm. And, because I think it says something like, two college friends are on the road trip and then something happens. Or something oh, like that. So you you assumed it would be more of a road trip than yeah. That. And then I watched the Got trailer. It. I was like, oh, okay, they're gonna be like not conned, um, not damn it, what's the word? They're gonna be mistaken as someone who committed a crime in this small town. I was like, okay. I just didn't realize the whole pre like the whole movie was basically gonna be like my cousin Vinny yeah. trying mm -hmm. to win this case. But I still really enjoyed the movie. I thought it was funny and. I didn't realize he was so short. Like when he stood up and the and the judge stood up, I was like, he's like a little person. But then again, yeah, that's <laughs> it's it's tough to compare because the guy who played Herman Munster, he's tall. Oh, okay. So, but but no no no, that doesn't change the fact that when when he stood, okay, his so like waist hit the it hit the top of the desk. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying Joe Pesci so, isn't short. So Joe Pesci is five foot four. So he's not like in the Danny DeVito okay. realm. He's taller than me. But <laughs> if we look at <laughs> if we look at Fred Gwynn, right? He had to be at least six foot tall. Fred Gwynn is six five. So oh, he yeah. had thirteen so inches yeah. on um on Joe Pesci. But it was funny because I noticed like two scenes they use the same stunt man for Joe Pesci. When he gets out of the car that they, they slept overnight in the car and then he falls in the mud. When he falls backwards, it that. is clearly a stunt man who's way taller than Joe Pesci. But then oh, when, he's, when he's walking and the guy's like, I got you $200 and he jumps and punches him, <laughs> that was the same stunt man. And I told her, I was like, if, if you look at it, you could see clearly the difference in height from yeah. when he's walking to towards the it. guy to when he actually jumps and punches, like the stuntman was way taller than Joe. Pesci. I'm gonna have to, yeah, rewatch that and catch it. But I just laughed so hard because the first thing out of my mouth was he had a jump to punch him. <laughs> He's so at an, at an angle, and then the punch sound was like, actually <laughs> happened before the actual contact, like the audio was off. Because I've never looked at this critically, and that's one of my all-time favorite scenes. It's just like woo. <laughs> It's like, I always wonder, was he on a trampoline? Like, why is he going at an angle? I know, it was like, poof. <laughs> oh, man. But he got his money finally, and I hope she gets her wedding. We didn't get to see that, but they were fighting about that. He's like, well, let's just go get married now. And she's like, you just don't get it, do you? I want to I want to, I want to get in a, um, in a church. I want my white dress. You know, blah, blah, blah. She's like, now you want me to marry you? Like, you can't even fucking win a court case on your own. Yeah. Which he wouldn't, he wouldn't even, I mean, I know in the end, like with, with her testimony and stuff that sealed the deal, but she won him the case even at the start of it, because like when he didn't, like, he didn't even know what contempt of court was. He was surprised when they threw him in jail. Like, like he seven didn't know, times. He didn't <laughs> like, know oh, what an arraignment was. He didn't know like 
with the procedures of an arraignment, he didn't know that you could ask questions. Well, why but didn't she he was, know? She was the one who told him, like, after he came back from hunting, that she was reading the book. And he's, like, saying he did such a good job getting the copies of, of the files and stuff. She's the one that tells him about disclosure. Like, he has the right to interview witnesses, which eventually that's what helped win the case. Because if she wouldn't have told him that, he probably would not have interviewed anyone. He would have just probably shown up and started like bumbling and, and stuff like that. Because he was what? With, I, I, I'm a I'm I'm a fuck. I'm I'm a scared. I, I'm a scared. <laughs> like you're not scared. I I'm a scared. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> what is this? But I mean, you have to like like honestly, Marissa Tomei really brought Lisa alive. Mm -hmm. Like that character, and then when she's stomping her foot like her biological clock is ticking my mom would do that growing up she would look at me she's like Ch -ch -ch. one day she like i think it was like a little bit after like maybe a couple of years or a year after we met i think she as a joke she came to me she started stopping her foot without saying anything i'm like listen your biological clock is not ticking stop that foot because like this movie <laughs> is definitely one that's in our Life and we went on a we went on a family road trip to Maryland and the place where we stayed they had like the free breakfasts right for guests and you can get instant grits because we were in Maryland and I remember I, I I took one of the packets back and I gave it to him and I think we had it for years just like on the side because what, what's what's one of your favorite lines? <laughs> Which one? Uh, that no self-respect and southerner uses instant grits. And then the pan to like the the jury, and they're, and all, they're all nodding. nodding like, <laughs> exactly. yeah, great job. like that one lady was just like, yes. That's I think I heard I an amen in you. that jury. <laughs> exactly. And then what about the the lawyer, uh, Mr. Trotter, hmm. where he was like that. He's like now like something about that word. He's like truth, right? And then he goes. It goes all the way back to our uh, little old ancestors in England, and then they just pan to like all the black people and the jury. <laughs> and I was like, "This is this movie is just fucking priceless. Like it's everything." Well, everything. with the with the grits thing and him being on stage, oh, uh, not not stage on the stand, and he was like, "Yeah, it just makes me like." takes me five minutes and then I'm done. And then he brought up grits and I, and I remember I was like, no, we got that monologue about the whole, it takes 20 minutes to, t mm -hmm. to make. And I was like, this dude's lying. <laughs> and then I liked when he finally was able to call like everyone out, like with the glasses <laughs> thing. And the guy was all like, so what's this dirty, like, what's this on the window? Mud. What's this thing or this what's rusty this thing? What's this disgusting covering? thing covering Jeez. the window? A screen. He's like, just shout him out. It's okay. <laughs> and I liked how it was finally coming together, but he still needed that one piece of evidence. Mm -hmm. And did we, we never found out if they caught the guy who actually shot him. Yes, yeah, they did. Did. yeah they that did. was on the stand. Mm -hmm. And the, when, the, when, oh, when wait, he no, called no, the, no, sheriff. the sheriff. Okay, the sheriff. Yeah. And they said, yeah, because they found the gun on, okay, never mind. On they the found two the gun people. on him. Mm -hmm. And okay, yeah, George. which going into the cons, these are parts of plot holes that I bring up. The sheriff actually committed perjury, he did, because before um, Vinny leaves to get uh, Lisa back into the courtroom, he gives the sheriff information that he needs him to look up, like about the, about the model of the car. And then the sheriff looks at him and says, No, you do your own work. And then he follows him out and he's uh, he tells Vinny, tell, oh, me tell me why, like, tell me why you want me to look this up. But when he takes the stand, the judge says, you know, you're still under oath. He says, yes. And then he proceeds to lie by saying on a hunch, I took it upon myself to look up this information, but he didn't do that. Vinny came to him and yeah. said, look this up for me. I, I wonder if maybe in legal world, he can't like Vinny wouldn't have been able to ask a cop that question i don't know there has to be some reason because either way it seems suspicious because you remember when the other when the prosecution was like i have the witness and like but i'm not going to tell you anything about it that right there they're not allowed to do because you have to right when you discover evidence you have to immediately tell the other side so they can per, can, can prepare their shit. so he like that would have been probably thrown out of court because the uh defense would have just been like we weren't told about that until this morning, so we need time to figure out our side of the case. Which they did, and then Fred Gwynn mm -hmm. said, 
you're he's like nope i'm gonna allow it and it's like fred gwynn was like constantly the judge was constantly like making it hard for Vinny. yeah i also thought another plot hole if Vinny, if he had legally changed his name remember he said that his name was really uh something crawl like jimmy Ken gallo or something like that. gallo and then it's he Cal said i had it i had it legally changed right he was an actor and <clears throat> I would assume, I don't know how these proceedings go, but I would assume at some point a lawyer has to show some kind of form of identification. At some point, right? One would think, but this is a small Alabama town where all the all the people are doing their relatives, so they're not a little... Which I had a feeling you would enjoy that part where they were calling, they all sleep with their sisters. So I was just like, this is the back hills of Alabama I was talking about. And then you had that weird dude who, like, that weird cop with the funny baby looking head. It's like, it's so creepy. It's like, well, and then the guy's like, but that's what they say. I don't know. And I'm like, you're not really helping yourself. But I mean, yes, okay, they would have to show credentials. Yeah. I mean, oh, another plot hole, um, and this is one that we discuss. The whole Jerry Gallo Callow incident, where like he like the judge takes Vinny to the back and he says, "You're a dead man," and then he tells him, "No, I didn't say Gallo with a G. I said Callow with a C." And then shortly after that, he goes to the restaurant. He tells Lisa that the judge knows that um, Jimmy Gallo is dead, but he doesn't say what name he gave the judge after that. And later on. Um, it's revealed that Lisa was the one that told um, Vinny's friend, the judge, Judge Malloy, to um, to tell him about uh, the fake name that he used. But she would have had no idea what fake name he gave her because right after that they went back to the courthouse. So it, I think it's just a it's a plot hole that this Judge Malloy, who's basically also committing a crime who might be a federal crime by lying about Vinny's identity, he would have no idea to know what name to give the judge. Well, did no. I lose you or? No, because the, the girlfriend explained it because he was all like, how did you do this? She's like, oh, I contacted so-and-so and told them. To how did she know something. the name he gave though? Because Vinny said it's Callow with a C. When he went to the restaurant, it's the very next scene. He goes to the restaurant. They fight, and he never tells her, I gave the judge a different name. So how would oh. she know what name to give the judge? And plot you, hole. you have a fix for the plot hole, but I don't know if it's... Okay. So, again, after... Because this is, this is the one plot hole every time we watch it that we continuously go around and around. And then watching it again... I was thinking of the timeline, right? So they they he calls him in, right? Because he only has 90 minutes for lunch. And then he calls, the clerk is not there, right? So, but he he's he puts in a message. Now, what I like in between the time of the message that he says, okay, have him call me back, Lisa finds out. At, at during lunch okay i was made right he knows that jerry gallo is dead so then she takes it upon herself in that 90 minute spam to call the judge and say listen you're going to get some kind of a message from your clerk that this judge in alabama is um is is trying to verify who vinnie is whatever name they give you just say this is who he is and call it a day. And I think that it's like, it could have been, um, it could have been Albert uh, Poopenhoppen. It doesn't really matter what name, because if there was enough time in that 90 minutes that the judge um, in New York intercepts, like the message would have said, um, Judge Malloy or whatever his name is in Alabama, wants to know about Jerry Callow with the C. So he could have just been like, okay, that's the message. That's how I figure it works out because this is not just a plot hole with us. 
on the internet with this movie. That's the biggest plot hole that people go round and round about is how is it the name with Jerry Callow? But I think that's what it is because they're like, now I did find another plot hole that I didn't think of on top of that one is there are so many clerks in New York. How did Judge Malloy know which clerk to call like that? I will give you, but yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, a magic. That explains that, it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, that's our that's our thing because a lot of the times, believe it or not, when we when we do argue like over stupid things, um, but not like a serious argument, but like you know, dumb, silly things, mm -hmm. like question, we always are like that. Are you sure? I'm positive. I have, How can you be so sure? I have another plot hole. Um, to my understanding, unless it's actually recorded on video, I think that any confession has to be signed. So for Ralph Macchio to say, I shot the clerk, it wouldn't be enough for him to say it. Yeah. It would have to be signed like a signed document yeah, that like he's I, actually I'm admitting I signed like I and, and the way that he said like he he sounded he's like excuse me you know like it didn't it, there the way that Ralph Macchio was saying it was um like he just found like, out like yeah I, like I, I, it was I more of a shock <laughs> yeah it was more of a shock than it was like oh I definitely did this so like there there is like and also too if if he's being convicted for murder and the other one is for accessory they would have never put them in the same jail cell together they would have uh never had them be out on like out in their at the exercise yard together um they would have been also i think represented by different attorneys and their cases would be tried at different things yeah. i think but no i again, think you could have you too. could have the same attorney uh, yeah you have the same attorney, attorney attorney i think one attorney can represent two people at but, the same time, I don't know. But maybe it just comes down to the fact that this is a very small, like, Alabama town. So maybe they do things differently. That but takes three yeah. times to, to to kill someone on the electric chair. That's oh my. crazy. <laughs> but I think, I think, too, it also was to show that just because we're in Alabama and everybody has this, like, idea... Fred Gwynn's character took things serious. Like there's that big like stack, um, that big book of Alabama, Alabama law. Alabama. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I just think that this movie is just from beginning to end, just funny. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even think that there was a full time where it dragged for me, you know? And there's even the side characters were memorable. Like the lady who couldn't see, and you know the stuttering lawyer and the guy the, the cook with his amazing menu that just said breakfast lunch and dinner it doesn't even tell you what it comes with and he puts that big thing of lard <laughs> them is hom nigrets <laughs> and i liked at the end how the um the defense not the no the prosecution team was all like hey if you ever want to come to us and practice I'm like, it's so weird to see shit like that because in the courtroom, it's like man versus man. They're both trying to like upper hand the other person. And then at the end, it's like all thrown to the side and be like, hey, if you ever want to come work for us, we could use you as a lawyer. It's like, but weren't you guys just like mad hating on each other? I mean, because I think it ultimately, and it's sad because it, you can be in competition and what sucks is it's the people that are being defended or prosecuted, you know, and then at the end, they kind of like will go off and be like, let's, let's bag a deer next time, you know, and then the whole, like, she just has such great lines with like the, now I ask you, do you think that deer cared about what, what the fuck the man was wearing in his pants? <laughs> and I liked when he wears that suit in court and the judge is like is that like telling me like so like how like you're you're talking back to me again are you mocking me with there, that suit there you go it's like no i'm not mocking son are you on drugs no not drugs i wore this ridiculous this thing, thing for, for you. you in the utes and it had the little flaps on the back too it almost looked like uh like a, what is it the, this 
ringleader suits of, at a circus? It reminded me of um, the suit Beetlejuice wore mm -hmm. when he was getting married. Kind of similar, yeah. I mean, the, the movie was just... I really enjoyed this well, movie. I was laughing. Um, the girlfriend and Herman Munster were the best. The kids didn't really have a lot to do with the movie, even though they are, like, on the stand for murder. Yeah. They didn't necessarily have... A big play in it. Yeah. I like when he called his mom. He's like, Ma, Ma, calm down, Ma. It's going to cost, like, 150000 to to $100,000. Ma, Ma, I know. <laughs> and then it's like, well, can we call your rich parents? What, can I get somebody to go up the Sherpa to the, the Indies to get a message? It's just, it's just all so funny. Like, everything was hilarious, down to the people in the town, um, the lawyer, all of it. And just like the, when they first appear on scene, that they're just, it's just in this black leather, <laughs> black cowboy. I fit in more than you do. I got oh, cowboy boots. You blend. <laughs> you blend. <laughs> I bet the Chinese food is terrible. With a little pink camera. And but her pictures actually saved the case. Mm -hmm. It's true. And not the one of him in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's honey, you've done it. <laughs> it's me in the shower. <laughs> But I mean, he was so <clears throat> mean to her. Like, like I had that as a, I as a like note. That. <laughs> like, he respects her, but also he doesn't respect her. I saw it as he doesn't respect her at all because here we go, here here we have this dude. He's older. It took him six times to pass the bar. Hasn't gotten a real like trial, and he keeps telling her, "Oh, I'll marry you when I win my first case." And then when she finally gets mad, she's like. But at this point, I'm never going to get married. And I think she was saying the truth. Like, if it mm -hmm. wasn't for this case, he would have just stringed her ass along until she was old and bitter. And then he'd dump her for a new girl. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's e he's egotistical because, like, in some ways he did respect her to, like, sh like it. ultimately it's not. It, it cancels it out. Like, I can understand that. But I like how he kind of, like, he he was excited to put her on the stand like okay watch what she can do you know like it's like a is, parlor it, trick but the thing is is it wasn't for her like it wasn't a way I like know. you can finally help me it was like you're going to win the case for me and i'm gonna win the case because i was smart enough to put you on the stand and that's what i'm saying like i know i know it cancels it out like he respects her but he doesn't respect her so it kind of zeroes it out but I just like how the like there's there is a definite in, like interaction because she doesn't respect him either. At the same time, like when when he got kicked out and then she went to go get him and then he's like, you know, you're supposed to stand by your man and you know all these different things. And then as they're walking away from the prison, she's like, oh, okay, you want me to be nice to you? Oh, you did wonderful. You were amazing. Oh my God, you're gonna win this case. You know, like there's. Do you think if they actually got married, they would still be married today? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think that I think that they would be ones that would like fight. Yeah, fight until the bitter end. And how many kids would they have? Three. I'm I think they, they would have, have three. Kids. And they would all <laughs> they hate each other. <laughs> and you know, one thing I like though is the fact that even though she was an out of work hairdresser she also knew like like cars and like not just car history like automotive history but she knew um how to like fix them and then you yeah. had the you had mr trotter you know kind of assuming she doesn't know jack shit. Mm -hmm. and then she's like what you do in your dad is in your dad is auto shop like as if like she just like took people's cash and greeted them she's like uh i did uh what was it um oil uh, oil changes, changes uh, tune-ups, brake realignment, um, rebuilt engines, uh, worked on some trannies, did like all of these different things. And he, then he had to interrupt her to say, okay, okay, okay. You know, and then I, I just, I really like that. Like, don't, un, don't underestimate somebody who might come off in one way. They could be brilliant in the other. But you know what would have been a really cool thing is like, what if 
She was, she did go to beauty school. She is a hairdresser, but she is also a mechanic. Like not just a, I used to work in my daddy's shop. It's like a no, she actually, because I think that one better than just the whole like, I'm a hairdresser who just happens to know everything and anything about cars. But well, she did work in but the. She is a mechanic. She did work in the mechanic in the garage. Not like as a real mechanic though. Yes. She just She just said she helped her dad or like when she was younger. I thought she was just doing the simple shit like oil changes and no. like. Hell no! Did I just say thirty seconds ago? All that whole like, list that she went through—that's all the stuff that she's done. Yeah. She knows cars. She knows how to fix cars. That's why in the beginning when they first go. And, and they arrive in town, even Vinny tells the guy, she knows everything about cars. She never heard about mud in the tires. Like, she's not just someone who knows about it because the they, family's done it. She, she's partaking. And in. when they got out of the car before that guy came up to talk about the mud. She even she gave said, him the I right think, answer. Yeah, she's like, I think you're, you, you, got, you got something like you're, there's an alignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like she sat there. She is a mechanic. She just wants to probably be known as an out of, like a, a hairdresser. But she's a mechanic. That's why she went through. I did oil changes. I uh, did brake alignments, um, rebuilt engines, uh, redid trannies, um, all of that. And that's why, I like, that's why I like her character is because she comes off as an idiot, right? Mm -hmm. Like she's a she's a floozy or whatever. You know, I loved her outfits, but ultimately she is a mechanic. Because even when he starts questioning her, and she's talking about her family history, the lawyer says, well, I understand. I see that your family is qualified, but what makes you qualify? And then that's when she said, this is specifically, you know, what I've done working as a mechanic. So she was a mechanic. She just was also. Oh, a, see, I just took it as a, <laughs> like, she just helped around. She wasn't like this is my job type of thing. <laughs> so you wanted her to say outright, I'm a mechanic. Yeah. I like, like when she was talking, yes, she knows the ins and outs of cars, but I never took it as a, when I was younger before hairdressing school, I was a mechanic. I worked alongside everyone. I took it as a, this is what I learned in my dad's shop. I was shown how to do this, that, and the other things. So I know how to do stuff. And I learned about cars through that. Oh. and not just, I went to mechanic school, this is my profession, I just grew up with people and cars. Like, But, but maybe back then you, there wasn't like a flat out mechanic school. Well, that was her school, being in the garage working on it. Yeah. True. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'll like, I, I don't know. Her down. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't like how she down. <laughs> I liked how she like basically showed them like, no, I know what I'm talking about. Don't try to make me feel like I'm an idiot. And, or maybe it's just the fact that like, they always have to hide it behind the girly girl. Like, do you think they would have believed her if she showed up looking like a butch lesbian? Like overalls, dirty hands, bad hair or buzzed off hair do you Dirty think they believe her but, uh, maybe but the thing is would it be as much fun of a character because it I, wouldn't have but like it's just i that's like a common trope is like you would never know she knew like she would know anything about cars because she's the stereotypical girly girl into clothes hair makeup she's pretty she doesn't look like she gets her hands dirty Next to, you remember in the other movie we watched on trains, planes, and auto automobiles, the girl who birthed her kid sideways? Like, you would believe by looking at her, she's been through some shit. She knows her shit. Whereas you look at the hairdresser and she looks like the nanny. She You're trying to nanny. genderfy her. <laughs> what is it called? Gendering? Where it's like... Gendering. Like, so, something. Like, what is one of those buzzwords nowadays where it's like, oh, because you're... You're a girly girl now. You got to be into all these things, and you can't be into that stuff. Oh, gender roles. Yeah, I don't know what the. I think I, I I I can I see like in reality it would be really nice. Like it does, you know, like if if it was reality. But I think what I enjoy is the message of don't judge a book by by its cover. Mm -hmm. You know, because she could be like. You could be into both. 
Yes, I it guess. Is, yeah. I think that's what <laughs> the world we live honestly, in. Honestly, it's she, one or the other. If she was, if she was like how Katie paints her, right? It would be so weird seeing her stomp. Like my biological clock is ticking, and she just kind of looks swarthy. You know, it's like, she's, well, she's yeah, no a, shit. She's the mechanic girl in her like steel-toled boots stomping. My mechanic, <laughs> my she's uterus like, is chewing, ticking. Chewing like. Uh, tobacco. It, tobacco and spitting it on the floor. It's like, no wonder, honey. Um, <laughs> oh my God, that's what it could have been. It could have been she was like the tomboy looking girl, and then he was the uppity, like, mm. like fashionista dude. Yeah, that's that going to be the remake <laughs> for this. Well, no, the remake is going to be it's a woman lawyer and. Mm. The judge is a woman, and the prosecutor is a woman, and then the peep and the kids being uh, prosecuted are black. That's the remake. In the South, I mean, I can believe mm. that. <laughs> like Probably. Probably. Netflix <laughs> coming to you. I, I would be so mad if this movie was remade. I wouldn't watch it. Yeah. Are you serious? I would actually watch a remake as long as they didn't. I just don't want to see an all female cast like they do with Blockbuster. Like, no. The there are some there are some movies to me that are so classic that I will not give the remake a time. A you time still haven't watched I've Christmas not, Story too. I have not There's watched the, the sequel one. to Christmas Story. I have not watched the remake to RoboCop. Um, oh, I haven't. Seen I never that stopped and watched forever. any of the episodes to Lethal Weapon, the TV show that they did, because it's like when you have classics, you just don't touch them. That's what they're there for. I, I I watch a remake of this though. I think it's because this is the first time you're watching it. You know what I mean? It's like it's like how um, last episode and a couple other weeks ago episode you spent a lot of time talking about Pennywise and how <laughs> mad you get. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean one of these days you we're gonna get, be watching you it. get on such a hill, which I can understand. And for me, I'm just like, okay, well let's see a vote about a remake because. It has no room in my life. It's brand new. I'm new to it, you know. Well, my, and in my defense, my biggest issue with the remake of it is the fact that they changed so much of the movie and the book that it's like almost it's entirely different. I understand. Yeah, but that's what but comes what? along with the territory of remakes, and that's why I'm so against watching remakes because then they take liberties into their hands i don't want to watch a robocop that's different from the one i grew up with i don't want to watch extra an extra story about a christmas story and now uh what's his name ralphie is like a teen and stuff like that i don't want to watch that see i never <laughs> I, I, never, I, don't. <laughs> I never i never knew there was a second christmas story so i guess we should have two lives christmas oh, yeah. story one and two <laughs> the second live is going to be katie by herself Talking no, about she's gonna be watching story. it. She's gonna make you watch it. She's gonna I was told. Not gonna I watch was that. told. I. Do you remember when we learned about it? I. What was I told? You do not bring that blasphemous <laughs> thing into my house. And one time I went to sit down and and I was gonna watch it and he came in and he gave me such a scary look. Like, don't. <laughs> and I literally was kind of like I was a little like frightened like. I know like you're going to turn into a lifetime movie <laughs> with like verbal, like verbal things. Like, like not like frightened as in like, I'm for the rest of my life, I'm going to hear guilt trips of you like, like going back with the Christmas story, you used up all the glue. It would be like, you put in, you put play of this horrible movie. And like we're going to we're, we're gonna have to throw out the TV. It could be on Netflix right now. I will not watch it. If we did. If I it, pick it, you have to watch it. I don't have to watch anything. Yeah. No. Yeah. Not at all. Y'all. <laughs> Y'all. I'll watch the original. You guys can And then, and then the you'll just sit here and then and then you'll you'll have a sign. What is it? Like that one football player is like that's my contract. Or like, you guys you guys here. can talk about the new one and I'll just just Rap on it. Everything what if you, you say. actually watched it and you were like, okay, I still hate it, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. No. Nope. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my life. <laughs> You're Lisa. You have one job: duct tape his ass to a chair, pry his eyes open. Oh, like, what, it's uh, what am I going to do? Clockwork Orange him? Yes. 
and be like Christmas story 24 hours or 24 7 on Christmas day. Oh, no, it's the, second one. the second one. Yes. Uh, I mean, or trick them into watching it. Just be like, we're going to watch a movie and just be like, we're watching Christmas story. <laughs> I've got to believe. You'll get up and leave. <laughs> As I was told, I don't own him. <laughs> I would rather watch a wall for the duration of that Which movie. would you rather watch, The Exorcist or The Christmas Story 2? I would watch neither because I no, have that you choice. Have to pick. You I don't have, have to pick, pick anything. There's there, there's three options here. No, nope, there's two, one or yeah. the other. <laughs> watch none. No. Nope. <laughs> I would rather watch The Wall, The Floor. Anyway, would you rather you were with 365 you watch the floor i would rather watch a seminar <laughs> on i don't know would you rather watch uncut gems yes <laughs> on repeat on christmas day because if you don't watch the christmas story too that's what you get to watch on repeat for 24 hours i would, I would rather watch uncut gems than watch a christmas story too oh god Nothing as bad as the gun gems. Coming from the person who, who craps on it remake. The it remake sucks <laughs> compared to the book and the original movie. It's so Pennywise good. does not look like that in the book or the original movie. It's not set in the 80s, it's set in the 50s. They fucked that shit up and they casted horrible people. Beep beep Richie is no longer funny. He's an idiot. <laughs> like there's a character called Beep Beep Richie. It's it's Richie. They always say Beep Beep Richie when he's taking things too far, and they don't even pull that off right in the remake. Like it's a huge thing because Seth Green plays Richie in the original TV movie, and he actually does all the accents well. He does all the acting well, and then you have the fucking kid from Stranger Things. And the only reason why they put it in the '80s is because they're hopping on a bandwagon of ooh, let's base everything in the '80s. It's a great remake. No, no, it's not. That's it. I'm picking A Christmas Story <laughs> 2 and then The it's Exorcist. A, it's, a, it's a perfect remake. It should be one of those remakes no. where you just get rid of the original. No. No. <laughs> and just keep the remake. Ever. No. 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 <laughs> and I'm going to actually it. pick the remake of it and make you guys watch it. And then I'm going to pick the original and make I've you guys watch them. it, then how can you tell me that Bastard of a Remake is anything near good? <laughs> Just trying to grind your gears. <laughs> like, holy you're hell. you're all about remakes. <laughs> and when they're good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the best part of it was the CGI. Yeah. <laughs> no! <Right? laughs> the CGI was even fucked up. <laughs> the CGI. Like that's, that's my candy Henry, gas. <laughs> Henry Bowers in the original and the book did not fall down a fucking well. <laughs> God damn. I'm picking that because I'm just gonna rant. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa just probably cuts all this shit out anyway. So. No, I'm keeping this. I love how you assume I cut everything out. Well, you cut off our little people in Jaws. Well, that was different. No, that was funny. Imagine a little Jaws. <laughs> the little people in the tanks. <laughs> it was funny. You guys were laughing. <laughs> but since it's not PC enough. <laughs> Moral of the story, it should have been redone correctly to match the book and the original, and it should have casted all little people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you, this entire time, yeah, I just kept staring at the screen, and I just felt you, and <laughs> you keep staring at me like, are you going to chime in? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, she's, she's about remakes, though. <laughs> I am, just not shitty ones. <laughs> like... The main thing that sh pisses me off about the It remake is the fact that they based this shit in the 80s. No, you should have stuck to the original book. When they were kids in the, in the 50s, it was more logical to sleep with your doors and windows open and unlocked. Whereas in the 80s, when you had the Night Stalker and all these fucking serial killers, people were a stranger danger. You didn't trust your neighbors. You didn't trust people. But they still behaved like it was the 50s. 
with the whole, oh, just trust everyone. Sleep with your doors open and your windows open and unlocked. And like, no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All about the remakes. <laughs> so, I think this, <laughs> my cousin Vinny should get a remake. And you know who should star as Vinny? Justin Bieber. There you go. Or the kid, or the kid, Massimo. There. <laughs> Could you imagine Massimo and Laura, <laughs> my cousin Vinny? He just spits on her on the stand. I'll get hostile with you later tonight. <laughs> and Fred Quinn got a little horny. Oh, I can understand that. Oh. You just see him, there's like a quick double take of him in like full on BDSM leather straps and then back to his little judge garb. <laughs> Looking like Frankenstein. <laughs> like Herman. I cannot unsee Herman. It's hard. And with Frank Gwynn, it's really hard to unsee Herman. It's just because of the strong It's facial everything. Structure. It's everything. Well, see, I was watching the movie and I didn't realize that was Herman until about like the middle. Well, like I think he was already thrown into contempt like twice or three times and I, and I was really looking at him and I was looking at his mouth and he said something because it sounded like it wasn't a southern accent anymore and then all of a sudden I was like oh my god is that Herman Munster and then my mom's like yes and then he was apparently in some kind of cop show she used to watch as a kid and I was like I've never even fucking heard that <laughs> and now Lisa's all silent no, I just have nothing else to say. <laughs> I don't I don't think that this movie should ever be remade. I think it should just leave it leave it alone, like with Shawshank Redemption, leave it alone. Um You don't want Shawshank Redemption remade so it's set in the eighties in the South. How about some in the eighties and, and uh, instead Morgan Freeman is like Queen Latifah and uh, <laughs> it's a woman prison and, and then Tim Tim Robbins character is uh I Diane don't know. Keaton. Sure. <laughs> Diane <laughs> crawls through like the the shit hole. Um, I don't know, while she's screaming because yeah, she always screams in her movie. Um, Straight out of First Wives Club. That's how she acts, like neurotic, right. like that. Oh, oh there's shit everywhere. <laughs> I just Come thought on, it, would, it would be terrible. Um, I I don't know. I just I have nothing else to say. I think with your guys's rants so i'm just like okay <laughs> i checked out i checked out like brooks checked out a book i'm i'm out i'm out bro lisa was here <laughs> you all went on a fucking tangent we were just talking about remakes <laughs> it started with the christmas story too <laughs> how great they are <laughs> Hey, for all you know, it could be a great movie. You haven't. I've told him this, yet. and he just doesn't care. Listen, I is it with the same actors or no? I will not watch it. No, it's not. Well, when I pick it, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> it's the conversation of box gingers and Puerto Ricans being Mexicans, mm -hmm. and I'm just here tapping on my chip pen. <laughs> oh. So is there anything else we uh, have to say about this film? No. <laughs> that was a good movie. Good watch. Yeah, everyone should give it a watch. Try it at least once. Um, and don't steal tuna fish. <laughs> yeah, don't steal tuna fish in the middle of Alabama. Huh? Yeah. I heard that they shot poor Jimmy. Oh, my God. That woman that came running up to the sheriff for the cop. I was hoping they... That's Okay, that's one thing. I was really hoping they'd um, do the whole, um, instead of just saying, oh, yeah, we caught the two men. They were driving a car similar to yours in Georgia, and we found the gun. I was kind of hoping they'd, like, drag them into court or, like, we'd see a picture or something or, like, get a little more info of, like, what did these dudes look like? Because what if they did look identical to the boys being accused? Or what if they looked like 
completely opposite from them. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> they were Japanese. It's like two old guys. <laughs> <laughs> they were two Asian kids or like, or right. instead of brown hair, they were two blonde preppy boys or... They were proud boys. <laughs> they were two... Rodden in the south, and they, they shot Jimmy in the back because he didn't fill up the slushy. Or, in the remake, it could be, they were two women. <laughs> we don't take kindly the guys to being folk accused, around here. And the guys being accused have long hair like women, so they, oh, God. it could have been the same. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> the 21st yeah. century amazing films that will come about, but... They were gender neutral, so they don't even. Oh my god, they're non binary. <laughs> <laughs> when they have their hair up, they're men, and when they have their hair down, they decide to be women. Well, that's all we got for you guys today. Tune in next week for another episode of Saturday Night Movies. And if you have a movie you would like us to review, comment it below, and we will try to make it happen. Unless Other it's a remake. That, <laughs> unless what? It's, it's a remake. remake. <laughs> Boom. Extra points if it's a remake. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Other than that, smash that subscribe button, ring that little bell so you get notified of all new content. And we'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye. The youths. The youths of the nation. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Where are the youths? Youths of the nation. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>